Okay, so we're going to talk about wall washing, but before we do that, I want to show you what not to do, and we see it all the time, and that is uh, to put the fixture very close to the surface that you're wanting to wash, and to end up grazing it in light. And what happens is, is now it pulls out all of the um, imperfections on the wall, and you can see obviously down around that, uh, uh, around that plug and in other places on this wall, uh, the imperfections just jump out at you. And so that we call wall grazing. While washing, we're going to step away, and we want all of those imperfections to wash away and for this to feel flat. Okay, so now let's talk about what to do when we're wall washing. And usually when you're going to wall wash, you're doing one of two things. Either I uh, have a wall that I want to be uniformly lit, monolithic. Maybe we painted it uh, uh, an orange or something, but we want the whole wall to be one uniformly lit uh, vertical surface. And to do that, we're going to use what we call a very flat wall wash. And that is what we've got installed here. And that's, uh, this, the goal of that then is to take the main beam of light and to drive it into the intersection of the wall and the floor. And then to cut back the amount of light that we have as we go vertically up the wall so that it appears very, very even, almost flat. And if you look at our light meters here, you'll see that uh, our biggest number is about 57 foot candles down to 37 foot candles, down to 27 foot candles, and then back up to about 24 uh, at the top. And so it is a very evenly lit wall. And this is what we want to achieve when we're talking about a flat wall wash. Okay, so the other thing you may want to be a, a doing when you're wall washing is highlighting something that's actually on the wall, so a piece of artwork or a logo. And in that case, what we want to do is create a, a focal glow around that object, on that object. I don't want it to be a spotlight. We want the wall to be evenly illuminated from floor to ceiling. But we want to create some extra drama right in that area where that object is going to be. And so to do that, we move our main beam from that intersection of the wall and the floor up into the middle of the wall. And that gives us that higher intensity there while still making sure that the wall is evenly illuminated. In this case, you can see I've got 88 foot candles and 48 and now down to 26. And so we've created that extra drama right where we wanted it by moving that beam up. And that's the great thing of true beam. We can aim the beam exactly where we want it and we can achieve these multiple distributions within this same niche. And we can do so in four different apertures. Until now, that just wasn't available.